Good evening, viewers. Good evening, family. Welcome to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Minister Lucy, and it's good to see you all this evening. And um, just to let you know, I will be teaching the Word tonight. So with that said, let us bow our head and come and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up, putting our feet on the ground, and starting us on our way. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your son Jesus to die on the cross just for us, Lord. We thank you. I thank you, Father God, for it is a privilege and an honor to stand behind this pulpit to bring forth your word tonight, Father God. May the Holy Spirit speak through me, Father God, because it's my desire to bring you glory and honor, more of you and less of me. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church says amen. 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 Let us give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And as we know what to do, we surrender to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, the Holy Spirit has allowed Pastor to teach an awesome series right out of the book of Exodus, chapter 2. And the title of that series that he, he just finished it, I think it was last week, was Continue to Multiply, Growing More. Well, I'm going to be going over that if it's okay with you. And please say yes, because if you, don't, if you don't say yes, then I don't have anything to teach. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Um, how many of you have learned a lot from it? Because I know I have. But I'd like to just share something with you, if I can, um, and with those watching. It benefits me so much when I look at the videos either through our website, and those of you that may not know our website, um, it is stifm.com, that's stifm.com, or through YouTube. And every time that I go over the videos and I look at my notes, I said, I missed that? Oh my God. I was like, when I was studying for this teaching, I'm like, I missed that whole thing, because you just, can't get everything down as you're writing or if you're going in your iPad. So um, I um, urge you to look at the videos because it'll, be, it'll benefit you. You know, each time you do that, the Holy Spirit reveals something new. You could watch a video or read a, read a scripture over and over, like faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God, as Pastor was just saying. But every time you read that, like the Ding, like something goes up in your head, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So um, let us um, turn in our Bibles or our phones or iPads, whatever we have with us today. And we're going to go to the book of Exodus. And we're going to read chapter 2. And I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 10 out of the New Living Translation. And let us take these scriptures and dissect them, so to speak. Amen? Okay, so that's um, Exodus chapter 2, and I'll be reading um, verses 1 through 10. But now, the word Exodus means departure or exit. And the Israelites, they were enslaved for not just one or two years, 400 years. That's a very long time. But we learned that what the enemy meant for bad, God turns it around for good, amen? So let us uh, now read Exodus 2, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to start with verse 1. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, 
put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the riverbank. Now, um, the woman saw that the child was a special child. And that is called the art of visualization. It's kind of a long word, visualiza visualization. <laughs> that is what you and I need to do in our life, to see not what the enemy wants us to see, but what God wants us to have and to be. God wants us healthy, amen? God wants us to have abundance in every area of our life. There used to be a comedian, I don't know if some of you will remember, um, that always used to say, what you see is what you get. <laughs> Amen. Now, the enemy wants us to see the worst of everything. The worst. In fact, um, please, before I continue, let us turn to 2 Corinthians. And we're going to read chapter 4, verse 4. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And when you get there, please say amen. amen. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 reads like this. It tells us that Satan, who is the God of this world, now I'm reading out of um, the New Living Translation, and um, God is lowercase. So Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. But family, you and I, as believers of Christ, should not be... We should not be falling for Satan's tricks and lies. We should always, I mean always, as hard it may be, no matter what we are up against and what it may look like, trust our Heavenly Father. Now, know the word special means beautiful. And also in the Hebrew, it means favored. Now, Moses was a favored child who grew up to be a favored man. He had an assignment from God. The same way Moses was favored by God, you and I are favored by God. Amen? In fact, repeat after me. I am favored by God. Let's say it again. I am favored by God. Do you believe that? One more time for the Holy Ghost. I am favored by God. Amen? In fact, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, family, let me ask you something. What is the gift that God has given you? Has God given you a gift? Is it the gift of teaching? Is it the gift of cooking, singing, what is the gift? And if you don't know what your gift is, we need to ask God to reveal it to us. What we need to do is take the gift that God has given us and allow it to become his grace. The gift that he has given us must function through his grace. In the natural, we are not going to be able to work that gift. We must give it over to grace, amen? Now, Moses' parents, they hid him for not one, not two, but three months. Three is a significant number. The Father, it's the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the same 
yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change, but guess what? We are the ones that change, amen? Now, I'm gonna go back to scriptures. I'm just giving you a little background, if that's okay. Um, keeping the baby Moses hidden for three months, what was that? It was an act of faith, don't you think? His mother put her trust in God that he would take care of this baby. Now, I know if it was me, I don't know if I can give up my baby like that, but she really had some trust, amen? No matter what it looked like. See, you know, God is always looking at our act of faith, our actions. We are so inconsistent and I'm not pointing fingers because I'll raise my hand. We are so inconsistent, and then we expect things to change. What we need to do is be consistent and not inconsistent. We are consistent in the negative things like murmuring and complaining and not doing what we need to do, amen? We have to stop that, amen? Let's make a a vow to stop it right now in Jesus' name, amen, praise God. Let the, allow the Lord to help us in that area. Now Moses was hidden because every male child at that time was going to be killed and only the girls were going to live. Now there may be some of us here right now or maybe someone on the, who was viewing right now watching this video this very moment, you don't know, how are you going to make it? But I have a word from the Lord for you in this scripture. Psalm 46, verse 10. And if you'd like to go there, that'd be fine. Psalm 46, verse 10. And tells us, be still and know that I am God, with a capital G, God, which means don't be murmuring, don't be complaining, don't be fidgety. I'm guilty of that. Be still. God wants to do something in your life, but he can't. Why? because you're moving around too much. Be still and watch what the Lord is going to do, amen? That's a word for somebody, amen. Now, um, we're gonna cross-reference those scriptures right now, so please, if you could um, turn to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, and we're going to go to chapter 11 and we're gonna read verses 23 through 29. Now when I get there, I could say amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verses, wait a minute, chapter 11 verses 23 to 29. Okay. <coughs> Just a second, all right, here we go. Okay, verse 23. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. I'm gonna stop there for a second. Now it says it was by faith. The scripture doesn't say it was by fear, does it? It says it was by faith. Now, in the New Living Translation, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, if you're in, uh, in chapter 11, go scoop up to verse 1. And it says here in verse 1, faith shows the reality. This is the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. 
It is the evidence of things we cannot see. In the New King James, it'll say, faith is the substance of the things hoped for, evidence, you know, it's almost similar, but what I like is faith shows the reality, making it real of what we hope for, amen? So like that's, how many times do I read that scripture? But when I read it in the New Living Translation, I'm like, the reality, what, you know, wow, it's pretty good, amen, okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what happens to us is that we fall into fear of man and we let it keep us down. We fall into depression. We need to be fearing God and not man. Now, the fear of God is respecting God, giving him reverence. It's not like, ooh, God. It's giving him reverence and honor and listening to what he wants to talk to us about and to tell us what to do. You know something? You all here and you watching um, this video are favored for something. There is an assignment that each of us have in Christ. Amen? And we shouldn't let what we may be going through weigh us down and get us all depressed. You are favored. You are favored, George. You are favored, Michelle. You are all favored here. And you out there, you are favored. Can you move your fingers? Can you go to the bathroom on your own? Amen? Praise the Lord. Let us continue reading. Um, verse 24. Hebrews 11, um, verse 24. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. Verse 26. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. Now, Moses gave himself to the present to receive that great reward, amen? amen? Verse 27, it was by faith that Moses left the lands of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, some of us cannot keep our eyes on the one that is invisible because we do not understand the spiritual. We only understand the physical and we say, we may say, if I can't touch it, if I can't see it, then I don't believe it. Now, how is your faith supposed to take you to another level? And we are supposed to walk, which means live. We are supposed to be living by faith and not by sight. And that's found in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. So we're supposed to be living by faith and not by sight. Now, are we doing that? I say amen. Amen. Okay. Everybody doing all right? Okay. Now let's read verse 28. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. And it was by faith, verse 29, that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they were all drowned. My goodness. Right now, God wants to drown every single one of your enemies. 
Amen to that. Praise the Lord. If we would only let him and stop interfering, we must ask the Holy Spirit to help us hear from God. And then we must submit and commit to what he is saying. We can't submit without committing. They go together. So when God gives you an instruction, we have to submit to it and commit to it. Amen? Okay. Let us now, we're almost done, um, go back to the book of Exodus. Amen? All right. And I'm going to start this time. I know we already read some of the scriptures, but I'm going to start again from verse 3, if I can, if you don't mind. Exodus chapter 2, verse 3. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River, verse 4. The baby's sister then stood at a distance, watching to see what would happen to him. Now soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. Verse 6, when the princess opens it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then, verse 7, then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you, she asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Praise the Lord. Now the floating basket represents something. It becomes a vessel of divine deliverance. You and I, and you, you watching, need to ask God today, whatever we are going through, God, allow me to get into that basket that is a vessel of divine deliverance. Deliver me, Lord, from this attack. Deliver me from this storm this feeling, this emotion, this way of thinking. Deliver me, Lord. I want to be placed in the basket. My God. Now let me ask you this. Moses was just a baby of three months of age. His mother that gave birth to him took him and placed him in the basket. And she made sure that the basket was secure and waterproof. Now, the Lord like just revealed this to me and I'm like, wow. Don't you think that Moses knew he was away from his mother? You're like, even being so young in age, a child, when his mother is not present, his ch a child knows when his mother's there, when he's not there. Even though when the maids of Pharaoh's daughter picked up Moses from the river, he was crying. He was probably missing his mother and was probably hungry, you know? And that was, so then he was sent back to his own mother, how that worked out. See how good God is? He said, was sent back to his own mother because he heard his cry, huh? And, and, and who, she was even paid to nurse him, amen? 
Now the basket of, was a vessel of divine deliverance. And if you and I allow God to put us in that vessel of divine deliverance, the basket is going to be placed somewhere securely, somewhere where whoever needs to see you will see you, just like Moses. That was all planned by God. They didn't just throw him in the basket and send the baby off. They, God knew that Pharaoh's daughter was going to find that baby. Like It was all planned. Amen? So what you and I may be going through has been planned. And you know something? God is going to get the glory for it. Amen? Do you believe that? God speaks to us in pictures. Hmm. What picture do you have of yourself in the future? Now, is it of an old man or woman with no teeth, confined to a wheelchair, and barely making ends meet? I don't think so. Or is it an older person who is prosperous and healthy in every area, amen? amen? So I ask again, what picture do you have of yourself in the future? And are you letting your Pharaoh hold you down? Praise God. Okay, we're almost done. Now, when Pharaoh's daughter found the baby Moses, she knew he was a Hebrew child. How did she know that? Pastor taught us. Because the baby was circumcised. Amen? Now, we're going to go to uh, the last um, few scriptures, and they're out of the book of Genesis, please. And we're going to read Genesis chapter 17, and we're going to go... Um, verses 9 through 11. Okay, Genesis 17. And we're going to read 9 through 11. Genesis 17. Okie dokie. There we go. Okay. Genesis 17, verse 9. Then God said to Abraham, <clears throat> Your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. You must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. Now, Whatever is coming against you right now needs to be cut off. Get rid of it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Verse, um, okay, let's read verse 11 again. You must cut, the, the, cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign-born servants whom you have purchased. Amen. Amen. Okay. God is always looking at our act of faith. And he's asked, what are you going to do for me? He says to us, I know it is a sacrifice for you to do something, let's say, for, for you to do this. I know it's a sacrifice, and I know it's going to cost you. But let me tell you something. It is not convenient to serve God. It is inconvenient. But I will tell you this, at the end, it will be very rewarding. Amen. Praise the Lord. It definitely will not be a waste of time. But you and I have to do something. But what do we do when we're having problems? 
Some of us may run away from him or turn our back from him. I was one of them. When I was faced with something, I thought I could handle. I found out that I couldn't. Amen? Well, I was wrong. Praise the Lord, I was wrong. But you can't do everything on your own. That's for sure. You need God to help you through. Okay, we're getting near the end now. I'm going to um, read two more scriptures, and then I'll be closing. Um, James chapter, you don't have to go there if you don't need to, if you don't want. James chapter 4, verse 8. That's James chapter 4, verse 8, just tells us, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So if you read that scripture, don't draw near to God, and he won't draw near to you. I mean, I, read, I, I like to read it as it says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Amen? And um, the last scripture... Um, is going to be in Isaiah, and we're going to read um, chapter 26, verse 3. And I will be reading that out of a New King James this time. Isaiah 26, verse 3, will read, reads like this. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Amen? So you will keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace. That means nothing missing, nothing broken. Perfect peace. How, how are we in perfect peace? Because we're trusting in who? In man or God? In God. Amen? Amen? How many of us want that perfect peace? Amen. I know I do. Praise the Lord. Okay, family. So that is my teaching for this evening. And if you want peace, not just any peace, but perfect peace, you have to focus your thoughts on God and not your problems. Don't lose sight of God. He will always, every single time, lead you in the right direction. Amen? Amen. Okay, family, thank you for, this, um, for coming out. And I want to thank those that were watching on the website. Um, it's a privilege and honor to be here sharing the word. Pastor Gregory will be back on Sunday. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen.